This makes this very clear. I'm doing you a favor by making this episode. Where's my... There you are. This makes this very clear. I'm doing you a favor by making this episode. Do you want to know what's next to me? The PlayStation VR. I knew I had to get a video out by this weekend. So I had to put this down. I love this thing. I will let this thing have my babies and you took me away for what? Anyway, welcome back to Object King. Uh, <laughs> welcome back to Object Couch. We are talking about Object King. Welcome back to Object Couch. Episode 2, Season 2, Movie 2, DVD 2, Blu-ray 2. Too many 2's to even think about. Maybe there's two 2's? Four? So what do you want? Um, four fours, eight. You have a lot to think about here. Um, so we're gonna get into this episode, amazing episode of uh, Object Couch. Do you remember last episode? Do you? Because there'll be five pop quizzes in this video. And if you get them wrong, and you've been lying to me saying you haven't been watching Object Object King's on the mind, man. I don't know why. If you've not been watching Object Couch, oof, I wouldn't want to be your bottom in the next five. That sounds sexual. I don't want to sound sexual. Um, I wouldn't want to be alive if I were you. <laughs> anyway, so to guide myself along this path of trickety track, I have myself some notes on my phone here. Now, you may be wondering, Aiden, this can't be this complicated of a discussion to have bullet point presentation. We're talking about the split. The thing that caused the fire to come up last episode. The thing that caused me to mention my dead nan. There's many things that make me do that, but the split is one of them. Now, I have a lot of problems with the split. I don't have any problems with Michael or Kerry, and I want to make that obvious. I love Kerry. His cheeks are just adorable. His smile is hypnotic. He's a lovely man. Michael has a good sex life. <laughs> We're going to get into it. Um, on why I think the split was such a difficult time for the object or community, confusing time, and why I feel like the whole choice led to the exact same problem coming around exactly the same way, and why I think this quick solution was probably the worst one. BFB as a whole was actually very well received. Um, it seemed that Jack and Jellerfy, Jack and Jellerfy, don't get them confused, couldn't do any wrong. And I agree. Um, I think BFB before 16, everyone had a more easygoing, chill lifestyle before the apocalypse. So everyone was really nice about the episodes. And that's to be said, the episodes are really, really good and everyone just kind of enjoyed the show for what it was. So the reception to this pre-split episode seems to be that the quality and the presentation of the, uh, you have to get in a French accent, of the show was peak. Overall, it definitely showed that a lot of people were putting effort and passion into it. No one really had any complaints. Um, and I could tell that the standard for greatness was getting so high though. Um, Jack and Jellerfy, don't get them confused now, which one's Jack and which one's Jellerfy, you'll be very disrespectful. Um, we're starting to feel that burn and I could tell um, they were starting to feel the burn of the continuous kind of bridge they set up for themselves that they couldn't fall down from. Especially with a series like BFB that was made to be a uh, more creativity outlet than a high production show. And I could tell that kind of flair was slowly dying down because it was overwhelming. So through that and knowing what they wanted from the series from the get-go, 
they decided to make one of the most controversial, dare I say it, damning decisions ever. That we recently took our YouTube animated series, which is called BFB, and we split it into two different branches. One of those branches is still called BFB, but the other branch is called Teapot. We realized there were actually two different things that people were looking for when they came to BFDI on YouTube. And one of those things were the crazy, silly, low stakes episodes like season one. And the other thing were really long story arcs, lots of character development, super polished animation, and pretty much the pinnacle of what the object show community had to offer. So these two desires were very different, and I think BFB was trying to cover both bases, so we figured a split in the show was inevitable. So we have the branch BFB with only 14 contestants, that is the whimsical side. And then Teapot, which has 40 contestants, will be the pinnacle animation side. A big motivation for this was I realized at the pace that BFB was going that the season wasn't going to announce a winner until I was in my 40s. They split the show into two things. Now, what they said was, and I'm going to make a lot of assumptions here, is what they said is that they wanted the whimsical side of BFB, um, the split, basically split the show into two shows. Uh, they wanted the smaller side to be more whimsical, fun, light-hearted, less impactful storylines, which they actually go back on, and Teapot to be the more polished, uh, character-driven, Mona Lisa version of their show. And that's fine, because they clearly believed there was a kind of difference in the audience and what people wanted from the show, but I could honestly say it was their own reflection of the show. BFB came from a place of annoyance. They couldn't keep creating BFDI because of college and stuff getting in the way, and BFB was a way to kind of throw quality out the window and throw creativity at the, f at the wall. And people's reaction was a little confusing. It almost felt like everyone gained self-awareness and went, huh, I don't like this. Can I actually say something bad about Jack and or Jellerfy, Mr. Jack and or Jellerfy? Um, so they did, and a lot of people slowly kind of came out of the shells of, I don't like this split. And I was one of them, I think. I, I think I gave it the, I, I think I expected it. I knew they were going to do something of that matter. And whenever it happened, it was more of a thing of, I was waiting for that. Um, they didn't even have an original plan to make Teapot. They were just going to burn the characters or something. Um, that would have kind of broke me a little more than it already did. But we'll talk about that trauma later. BFP 17. So their idea and what their plan was is they wanted to run... This is why I think the whole split failed. They wanted to run BFB, the Winsicle Cute side... And Teapot, the more polished Mona Lisa side, at the same time. So they could get their creativity out, but still have a big project on the side. And when BFB 17 came out, it was very apparent that the quality had dropped drastically. And that's not making fun of any animators or saying one's worse or one's better than the other. Overall, every animator had their own style. And it may not fit in BFB, but it fitted in general to some other project that they could work on. Um, to their own skills and their own ambitions. And overall, their our art style is actually pretty cool. But for BFB, the big quality drop angered a lot of people. And it wasn't just the quality drop of their visuals, the story was dropping too. There was a lot of inconsistencies. I mean a lot of inconsistencies, a lot of mistakes, a lot of slip ups, a lot of almost disrespect towards the audience without treating itself with respect. Um, a lot of it went kind of in this awful area where they really didn't know what they wanted to do with it themselves. Um, so the reception to it was actually pretty negative at the start, to the point where people were calling it the Dark Age of BFB. So everyone was like, okay, so at least we have Teapot to look forward to. Teapot didn't come out until a few episodes before the finale. 
So one of the reasons that they split the show in the first place was the characters. There was about 62 of them, maybe more. And one was being eliminated an episode and it would pretty much make it nearly impossible to finish the show. So they didn't have to worry about that with Teapot because they didn't need a finale. It was all based on polish and character development. But by the time Teapot came out, BFB was wrapping up. They, all they were left with was Teapot. The exact same show with the exact same levels of quality that they wanted to get rid of with the exact same amount of characters. Not only did they split the show for nearly no reason, they went exactly back to where they wanted to before. There was not really a reason for it. The sad thing about Teapot, and the re sad thing that a lot of people got upset about, not only did the problem just come back, maybe even worse, but Teapot had a lot of ambitions that just were never sorted out. Originally, the plan was that characters from BFB and Teapot would almost jump back and forth via competition. There's no rules. Anything could happen. Characters might move between seasons if they want to. The hosts might change up the challenges if they want to. Nothing is set in stone. Just it would be a more lenient thing for both of them, but would also work for the story base of the teapot, where if a character left due to a conflict, they could join BFB. And it would be running side by side, so it would be a polished due to a sketch. Oh my god, Aiden! English! It's time to act fast. Anyway, so it's like writing in your sketchbook when you have a Mona Lisa painting you're doing at the same time. It's kind of di two different forms of uh, end goal for creativity and it would mash up perfectly. But that was never done because Teapot was done or started by the time BFB ended and because all the focus was on Teapot again, it just kind of led the exact same problem that BFB post-split did, or uh, pre-split. Too many characters, too high of demand, too high of quality, and that was pretty much exactly where they started. They tried to continue Teapot in a more kind of idea that what they wanted was more story driven, more character driven. I can't even say that they did that, and that's the kind of disappointing part. They didn't even fill in on that side of their promise, because Teapot to me isn't story driven at all. It's very goofy, it's pretty much just as goofy be as BFB pre-split ever was. And then they brought in Teardrop. Not only did they go back to their original problem, but they made it worse by debuting someone from BFB that already lost over to a show that already had that problem. And then Clock brings up the idea that broke me. One contestant. No! Foldy! Hey, two. A lot of us have been wondering, if there's 41 contestants and we compete this infrequently, how are we going to ever possibly finish this competition? Huh? Seriously? Where do you keep leaving for months on end? Oh, gosh, fine. I'll show you all my greatest shame. No! Well, since you have nothing to show me, this also gets a zero out of ten. Sad with a capital S. Two teams got a zero, so what'll the tiebreaker be, two? Hopefully not a performance. <laughs> Sorry, Yellowface. I promise to do better going clockwise. Well, it hardly seems fair to the other teams to give you both another shot. And earlier, Clock, you did point out this game is going so slowly. If there's 41 contestants and we compete this infrequently, how are we going to ever possibly finish this competition? So, I think a way to speed up this competition is to have two teams up for elimination! <gasps> oh, I get it, cause you're two! Viewers, two teams are up for elimination, but you only get one vote total, so vote one contestant you want to have saved. The contestant with the fewest votes on teammates and the contestant with the fewest votes on the S will both be eliminated. Make your one vote count! He brought up the idea that we should do double eliminations but not on a singular team. Two teams up for elimination at once, we lose one per team, so it's not unfair. And I sat back and I thought, why didn't we do this from the start? I love BFB's teams 10 times more than I love Teapot's teams. 
because it seems that Team Pot's kind of on a mission right now to violently butcher any character it comes across. And I know that's a little rude, and I'm sorry, but that's the only way I can see that they're doing the pin right now. Um, I'll talk about the writing some other day. I have a lot of grind with the writing style now that they've brought in a lot of new writers, but whatever, that's fine. Right, Aiden? Right, VR? I have a 10 hour shift tomorrow, man. I can't play that. Why can't I play it, man? I just. Don't they know I have a PlayStation VR 2 now? Pay me to be on that! I'm on that 10 hour shift right now. They didn't pay me to play the VR. I'm just working. BFB could have never split. They would have never had the problem of. Like, they could have lowered the quality. Fine, people are gonna bitch about that anyway, but I see the outcome being so much better is if they didn't split the show, lowered the quality back to BFB1 style, because that was an awesome style. I love that style, and that would get way less controversy than making an inconsistent style. They didn't really have one, and they could have just done double eliminations from there. I have a lot of gripe with it. It could have been so much better. I love BFB teams. Not only do they feel like a family, they feel like they're really well written. I think BFB pre-split is really, really good. Just for the teams, the dynamics, the families, it means a lot. And overall, I got very connected to these families. I will never feel that same way about teapot characters. Or at least teapot teams. Because I care significantly less than I ever did um, and maybe that's my fault if they just didn't do the split in general and follow the rules I said before because BFB style was so quick to make it was fun it was cute everyone loved it I feel like it would have got way more positive reception bringing it back than bringing in new animators that makes the style even more inconsistent and new writers that kind of made it even more confusing and more mistakes coming in. Now, what good things came from the split? I think so many good things came from it, right? Blocky and Woody's relationship is a highlight. Yes, it would have been so much better if it didn't ever split and with the original pre-split teams, it would have been even better because so many other characters could have got involved, but it was great for what it was. I think it's actually pretty great. The fire in Leafy arc, again, would have been even better if we didn't split, but I think it was really, really well written and it answered a lot of questions. It was very lore heavy. Again, in the whimsical side, not the actual important lore side. Teapot hasn't done anything apart from Goof Around recently. Um, I'm gonna get blacklisted by Jack and Jellyfree, aren't I? <laughs> Uh, there's so many positives to it, but a lot of it can just get kind of smothered by the idea of the mistake they made of even splitting in the first place. And it kind of makes me a little sad. I'm gonna be honest with you. A little sad. I think that rightly so, the community has become more critical. Now, I think it's gone a little too far in one end where it almost starts jumping the edge on if a character is overrated or underrated or if a character does one thing good they're the best character in the whole show and if they mess up once they're a piece of shit. Like I don't understand that mentality. Fries for instance, I know I'm gonna get hit for this, but he did one nice thing towards Puffball. And now he's like an underrated gem for some fucking reason. What? Why? Remember when Tennis Ball stood up for his friend when she was getting physically attacked? Yeah, he's a simp now. Are we watching the same show, Dad? It's- I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. It's definitely made it more critical in that way, and it's made it more critical towards the episodes as a whole. There's people that'll sit down on their cities and they'll talk about how much an episode sucks or doesn't suck, and uh, the, how the writing was bad, and uh, just in general. And I think that's great, but it never happened before the split. We all just kind of agreed every episode was the best they could do and it was a lot of fun. Now it just kind of seems like the demand has gone higher. 
a lot of people are just a bit more critical and a lot of people are a bit mean. I was mean this episode and I feel bad for it, but it's just my opinion. <laughs> I feel bad for criticizing Jack and Jell for you because the last thing I want is for Michael or Carrie to ever think that I was against them or angry at them or unsatisfied with their show. In fact, I love their show. I think BFB, post-split, pre-split, teapot are one of the best shows ever made. And I genuinely believe that. I honestly think they're amazing shows that didn't only just save me from suicide multiple times, but have inspired me to create joy and love. I love BFDI. And I would never want to distinguish Jack or Jellerfy to ever, ever give up on creating such an amazing series. But maybe just kind of, you know, drop the merch shit. Like, I, I, uh, new, for, for a pedal, say it, Cody. Maybe just kind of, no. Anyway. Gonna go and sleep and then cry because I won't be able to play the new VR for another day.